This is Virginia Coffee. That's husband Bill with her. The people of this church, of this neighborhood, all of the citizens of Cincinnati owe this woman a debt of gratitude. When racial tensions in this city ran up to and past the boiling point, it was Jenny Coffey who got people talking, changed hostility into constructive dialogue. She remembers how it was not so long ago in Cincinnati. There was a great deal of discrimination and segregation in the city. Black people were not permitted to attend theaters uptown. There were no restaurants open to us. The parks were closed. Swimming pools were segregated. One of the jobs of the Human Relations Commission was to change all of this. That was a big job, but Virginia Coffey had the kind of background needed at the time. I grew up in Grand Rapids. I called it a little United Nations because there were all kinds of people on our street, German and the Syrian family. And then down on the corner of our street, there was a Greek Orthodox church. Across from us lived the O'Brien children. And I loved the Italian people. It was so colorful, so warm. Then the Jewish community provided the culture. Virginia finished her education at the University of Cincinnati. She took a position at the West End branch of the YWCA, and by 1932 had been promoted to executive director. During the 30s, she met a young man from the YMCA. She called him Coffee. She still does. We struck up a friendship, and that friendship sort of blossomed. That led to 1941. A marriage that has lasted 52 years. In 1943, Jenny became director of youth activities at Carmel Presbyterian Church. Church has always been important to Virginia. It still is. Her present pastor, the Reverend Clarence Wallace. The thing that impresses me most about Mrs. Coffey is her genuine commitment to people. She involves herself tremendously, not only in the community, but in her involvement in the church. In the 1940s, she established the first black Girl Scout troop in this area. She then became a Girl Scout field director and pioneered in the integration of Girl Scout troops and day camps. Girls that she had in those days, they stay in touch with her. They did not want to do anything that would make her ashamed of them. So this was a kind of a, a, a character building that she gave to all these young women. Although we didn't have any children, but we say that we have thousands of them. In 1948, Jenny was asked to join the Mayor's Friendly Relations Committee. She often called upon the services of a longtime friend. I saw Virginia as a person who could uh, build bridges. She left the committee in 1962 to work as the executive director of the Seven Hills Neighborhood House. I became uh, chairman of the Human Relations Commission in 1967. The first race riot, at least the first one in the last hundred years in Cincinnati, took place in that spring. The city was totally surprised. The National Guard was called out. Judge Arthur Spiegel and Judge Black immediately thought of Virginia Coffey. They were the two leaders who approached me as to a function and a role that she might play. I felt that what we needed was more of an intermediary that could bring people together and help us to identify issues and resolve problems. She became a confidant and a leader in helping to confront various issues. There were hot times. Uh, she was very articulate, uh, very committed, and she didn't pull any punches. She reestablished uh, connections with uh, the fragmented uh, community, and she regained the confidence of counsel. Her public persona, if you want to call it that, um, was such that she had a very um, calming, a very quieting influence. Oh, I've seen her diffuse uh, some pretty hot situations very well. And she came in and took a, uh, a human relations commission that was essentially in disarray and really made something of it. A meeting that Jenny worked in, even if there was some controversy, you came out of it, everybody felt good. Virginia was absolutely perfect for the job. Perhaps the most constructive thing that Virginia did for city officials was to put them in touch with the black churches. This was one of the elements that she identified that had to be done. The only way that you can really, really change attitudes of people is to know them to know them, and to know them means that you have to sit down with them, 
talk with him. She played a magnificent part in helping to address these issues and bring our community through a very troubled time. Pray we had more people like Jimmy. There is one story that Virginia tells that sums up both the pain and the triumphs of her life. It's the story of a spirit transcendent. I went to speak to a large, very large group of white women, and I went to tell them about the Human Relations Commission and what we were doing to try to create amity among the races. Just as I started, four women got up and turned their chairs around so that their backs would be facing me, so that they would not be able to see my face or I am able to see theirs. And I might have stopped. I might have been discouraged. It was a terrible feeling that went over me, but I didn't stop. I didn't let it faze me. I went right on and said my speech. And at the end of the meeting, I answered all the questions, the many questions that were asked because it was an excellent, warm response from the rest of the audience, and I finished. Of course, as you might well guess, I came home and I cried. Anybody would. The next day, the president of the club called me. She was so embarrassed and so hurt, and she told me she had called these ladies, and she was asked them why they acted this way. And one of the ladies said, I'm not ashamed of what I did. I hate niggers. There's nothing that a nigger can ever say to me that I want to hear. I didn't want to hear what she said, and I didn't want her to see my face, and I didn't want to see her face. I'm not in the least bit embarrassed. I told the president not to be concerned about that one person because in spite of that one person's attitude, what about all the other ladies who responded so warmly? So we lost one, but we gained the friendship of all the others in the crowd. Ladies and gentlemen, now you know why Virginia Coffee is a great living Cincinnatian. <laughs>